hey, and if it's that house or that car, then you got to make payments. <laughs> If it's that relationship, you'll find that, hmm, I don't know. You know, I thought he or she was all these things, and I don't know now. You know, me and Melissa have talked about this a lot. Especially people who are dating, don't get married. Ignorant people. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to smile and tell you you're going to love it. <laughs> We're going to smile and tell you you're going to love me. But I'm here to tell you, the, the way they should end the wedding, my uncle used to say, was the fight is on. Is what the, they should leave to that. Huh? People get frustrated in marriage, don't they? Lying dogs if you don't say yes. But they get discontented in a relationship. Listen, I said, me and Melissa, I started out with that, and then I got sidetracked. Me and Melissa talk about a lot. People, when they're dating, they put their best foot forward. Uh-huh. Amen. Yes, they do. Oh, hey, I'm guilty. Open the car door. I'm going to get right in my own house here. Man. Open the door. Can I, can I pull your chair out for you? I love you. You're so sweet. All that good stuff. You know what? When we get married, we say, get your own door. Right. You big girl, you pull out your own chair. Now you think that's stupid. I know, you, I know you're laughing. You think it's stupid. Now, Brother Jeff, what's this got to do with your sermon? This is what I'm saying. We find satisfaction in all these things, right? Then we come to Christ and we say, well, he, he'll fill that void. He'll take the place of that. And you know what? <laughs> we got Christians telling lost people. Lost people who are discontented in life hearing from Christians who are discontented in life about Jesus being the thing that will fill the void. Maybe you don't understand where I'm going with this. I want you to think about this for a moment. And if it involves somebody sitting next to you, don't get mad enough that you hit them, okay? <laughs> what is the one area in your life right now you're most frustrated with? Why don't you just think about that for a minute? <coughs> Not no really mad faces. That's good. <laughs> the one area in your life where you're most frustrated. Now I want you to think about something for a minute. What has God done for you in that area, specifically? That one area where you're so frustrated with. It might be your family. It might be your family. You, you might be frustrated with your family. Maybe there's been fussing and fighting and, and, and you're frustrated with your husband or your wife or your children or whatever. Let me ask you a question. What if we start looking at our families as a gift from God, which they are? What if, we, what, if we, what if we quit looking at the discontentment and the dissatisfaction we have in that area and we started, we started loving our families as, as a gift given to us by God and started serving them and loving them and being there for them as such? What about that job you're so mad about? Hey, I'm going to turn my notice in a few times. Say, I quit. You can have it. But what if... What if, what if if that's the area where you're most dissatisfied, what if, we, what if we saw that as a gift from God? The fact that we're able to provide for our family, even able to earn a paycheck, that we have the physical ability to go and do our job, what if we saw that as a gift from God? What if we saw that as an opportunity to minister to people on a daily basis? Would that change whether we're satisfied where we're at? Maybe it's relationships. What if we viewed relationships that we have whether they be our family, our friends, our colleagues, acquaintances, what if we viewed our relationships as, as divinely orchestrated by a loving Heavenly Father? Would we be satisfied with them then? He said, Brother Jeff, I don't know where you're going with this. Well, you know, we're no different than the people of Jesus' day. See, if you go back just a few chapters in John chapter 6, you'll find that Jesus had, had drawn a crowd. Matter of fact, if you come on Wednesday nights, we're going to get there in the next few weeks and get to talk about this. Jesus fed the 5,000, right? I mean, he'd been
been preaching. He'd been doing miracles. All these great things were happening. And suddenly, at least 5,000 men, this doesn't count women and children, show up to hear him talk. And he, he, he preaches and teaches to them and loves on them. And then, it's late. And they need something to eat. And they can't go back and get food for all the people and, and everything. And, and, and they don't have the money. I mean, one of the disciples even says, it'll take eight months worth of wages to feed these people. Eight months. And that might not even be enough, he told him. So where do you see that, Brother Jeff? It's in there. You got to read it. Study the Bible. Okay? One of the disciples says, well, we got these five loaves and two fishes. Jesus takes it, he blesses it, he breaks it, he feeds them. They all decide they're going to stay. Hey, they're giving out free food. We're staying. We're not going home. Why are we going to go home? We have to go home and work. We have to go home and do all this. We're going to stay here and get fed. So they sleep there. They wake up. Jesus and his disciples go on the other side of the shore. They got in the boat. Went bye-bye. People wake up like, where's he at? He's across there. They go chasing after him. They crowd him back up. Jesus tells them in about John 6, verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat the loaves and were filled. He said, guess what? He said, you're here because of what I can offer you physically. You're here of what I can do for you. And then Jesus tells them that all he's got to offer is himself. No more free bread. No more fish and chips. It's me. Jesus offers himself to him to, to the people saying, I'm the bread of life. And what he was telling them is he's saying, I'm the only way to get to heaven. I'm the only way to live forever. But the sad thing is, and I call it the devil's verse in the Bible, John 6, 66, Mark the Beast. The sad thing is, is when Jesus offered himself, guess what? He wasn't enough. Because the Bible says in John 6, 66, if you read it, it says, From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. People quit following Jesus when all he offered was himself. Let me ask you something. Is he enough? If everything fell apart, would he be enough? If everything bent, broke, went wrong in life, would it be enough? You say, now wait a minute, Brother Jeff. We're not like them. You're not up here handing out free food. Jesus ain't offering us some meal ticket. We're here. We're worshiping. <clears throat> you missed the point if, if, if you don't see this. Jesus wasn't. But he is. So oh, wait a minute, Brother Jeff. What, what do you mean? See, he is enough. But there's a lot of people who aren't satisfied as Christians. Oh yeah, I've seen some miserable Christians. I'm sure you have. Yeah, they're not satisfied. They're not satisfied in their walk. They're not satisfied with their life. They're not satisfied with their marriages. They're not satisfied with their jobs. They're not satisfied. <gasps> what do you mean? Well, you know what? I think that we've got to know him. We, get, we got the knowledge, the head knowledge. I mean, you're even saved. A lot of people are saved and dissatisfied with Jesus. But you know what's holding you back and what's holding me back? Is that relationship has to be real and personal. And it can't be on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. It has to be 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, when no other person is watching you, when there's nobody there to hold you accountable. It's got to be a commitment. Amen. See, you and I, we've we got to know that, that when the Bible says it, and here, here's where I'm trying to go with this. 
If we're going to become satisfied with Jesus, we've got to know what the Bible says in Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We've got to know that those are not empty words, but something that we can have confidence in. Amen. You say, oh, wait a minute, Brother Jeff. Hey, listen. This is so wrong, but we do it. Things start bending and breaking in life, and we look everywhere but to Jesus. And then things finally reach a point where we're ready to give up. Throw our hands up in the air and say, I quit. Quit on our jobs. Quit on our marriages. <coughs> I quit. And you know what we missed? Is that we waited till the end to go to the peace giver. See, those aren't empty words. When he says he gives a peace that passeth all understanding, he means that. Now, I could go on and on through the Bible and show you things. Just like the Bible says that we rejoice with joy unspeakable because of our faith. Because of the things that we have believed in and trusted in and the promises we've seen fulfilled, we rejoice with joy unspeakable. Yeah, y'all do, don't you? Somebody said we need a mirror up here so you can see yourself. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Some of us look like we've been weaned on lemon juice. <laughs> we look like we've been weaned on lemon juice. I mean, I mean that. I mean, oh, God, I'm tired of following Jesus. Woo, Jesus. Oh, Brother Jeff, we just ain't as excited as you are. You might as well get over it. It ain't going to happen. You're going to be sitting in the corner by yourself in heaven, man. <laughs> I guarantee you the Lord won't stop me from rejoicing with joy unspeakable. Truth is, some people aren't contented out there today because we have knowledge and religion, but the relationship's not real. And we'll never be satisfied until the relationship is real. You say, Brother Jeff, why does it matter? Why do you care if I'm not satisfied with things in life? Because you wrecked the picture. Because you wrecked the picture for a lost and dying world. What do you mean? Everybody got their bulletin? <coughs> Look at the front of your bulletin. I want, I want this put on here because I want you to remember this. I want you to remember this. I, I want you to put this somewhere this week. I mean, if you like me, put it on a refrigerator. I always make a refrigerator, okay? If I don't go nowhere else in the house, I go to the refrigerator. Alright? Maybe some of you, I don't know. Maybe you're always in your car every day. Put it on your steering wheel, put it on the dash, put it somewhere. Put that verse right there. You see what that verse says? Read it with me. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Revelation 22, 17. If we're not satisfied, we wreck the picture. You know why? Because the Spirit's saying, come. The Spirit's saying, come. The Spirit's saying, if you're thirsty, if you're dissatisfied with life, if you're wondering where you're going to spend eternity, look no further. Jesus is saying, I've got a well of water that if you drink from it, listen, that well will never run dry. Amen. You'll never have to wonder where you'll spend eternity. If you'll put your faith and trust in the man, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the only one that can take you there. The Spirit's saying that. The Spirit's been saying that all along. From cover to cover, the Spirit's been saying through the Word of God, His saying, come. But it doesn't just say the Spirit says come. It says the bride says come. Church, we're the bride. And, and, and we can't offer a lost and dying world empty words. Come and get the void filled. You've got this God-sized hole. Come and get it filled. And then walk around dissatisfied. 